Break this down uh, in depth here. Corey Rosensteel certainly knows a thing or two about the law as uh, we're talking about jury selection uh, starting today uh, in the trial. And that is the first step. And how long do we expect that to take, Corey? Well, in your typical misdemeanor, you may, uh, you may see this take about a half a day. Uh, it's certainly possible in this case because this has such a broad uh, attention mm -hmm. uh, of, the, uh, of the public, it may take longer because what the, the judge and the jury have to do excuse me, the judge and the, and the attorneys have to do is they have to try to find some folks who don't have preconceived ideas about this case. And that's whenever you're hard, in the media, it? it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Yeah, that's so right. it could take longer. I've heard some people say a week. Do you think that's too long? A week sounds long to me, but it certainly could take more than just a day. Okay, the judge here is Robert Sumner. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Uh, he has to make another decision quickly. Do they allow cameras inside the courtroom? What do you think? Well, that's going to be up to the judge. I, my, my guess is that the judge is going to say no on that, but, uh, but we'll have to wait and see what he has to say about that. Why do you say that? Because I believe North Carolina has, a, you know, like a lot of states, they want to have an open door when it comes to the court, so there's nothing, hey, you know, this is all up front and uh, out there. You do. The, the problem is you don't want to create a, uh, an atmosphere that's not conducive to a fair trial. Mm -hmm. And that's really what the judge has to decide is he's got to decide, can I do this in a fair way for the, uh, for the defendant? Yeah, clearly the media, we, we would love that. I mean, uh, a lot of stations would probably go wall to wall with it. I've been through that scenario with uh, uh, down in Orlando. I've been, you know, you name it, uh, folks want to see what's going on inside the courthouse. And, and that's the risk for the judge. He yeah. creates a circus atmosphere rather than a, 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 a trial, a fair trial. Okay, so convicted by a judge last time around, going in front of a jury, he appeals, he wants to get this done. What happens to him? What's the worst that can happen in this trial for Greg Hardy? Well, he's eligible for jail time on this. This is a very serious charge. I mean, obviously it's a misdemeanor, but it's a serious misdemeanor. And so he's eligible for jail time. Uh, obviously for him, the bigger deal will be the public exposure and the, and the problems with his professional career moving forward. Now he's a free agent at the end of the season. Uh, and he still obviously can play a lot of football. He's 26 years old. Uh, doubtful the Panthers bring him back. I think we all kind of realize that. Um, what now? This is this is obviously speculation, but uh, a guilty verdict from a jury that'll that'll affect things big time. He's already served the suspension. So so what what addition uh, you know punishment can can he face? Well, that's the big question with the NFL right now, right? I mean, this is what we've been talking about since Ray Rice. Mm -hmm. What's the NFL going to do with somebody uh, at this point who has served basically a, a one-season suspension, although uh, from what I understand, he has not lost his money for this season. 13 so, million, yeah. So what do they do with him? And I, I think that's a big question moving forward. We'll have our eye on this trial as uh, long as it lasts here. Certainly, Corey Rosenstiel appreciated it, as always. Thanks for coming in. Let's send it over to Paige.